what account am I saying? The truth is, people, the people understand the ATM cards as being only for the drawing money from the ATM and nothing else. So if you are to sell something online and you're providing card payments on your website, there are very few people who are going to use their cards to actually purchase. Because three quarters of Kenyans have no idea that they can use their cards to purchase stuff on your site. So that's like a major challenge. And then uh, I'll just need to mention this. If you consider how the way M-Pesa has become very popular over the last few years, and then you compare, okay, you compare how that has happened in this country, in Kenya, and then you compare how M-Pesa has failed terribly in other countries, and then you ask yourself, why is that so? And then Michael Joseph, the former CEO of Safaricom, what did he say? He mentioned that Kenyans are very peculiar. We are very peculiar people. There are things that can only work here, and they can't work anywhere else. But the truth is, if you look at uh, some other countries, in other countries, so here we can, we can talk about M-Pesa being so and so, but then the other places where they're doing NFC, NFC is a near field communication where you just need to tap your phone and the payment is completed. And it, it works well there because they have all these devices, they already have the infrastructure to handle that kind of thing. And then you have other countries like China where they have a system called WeChat, which is basically like a WhatsApp, but integrated with all other things and you can use it to pay. And then funny thing about WeChat is, um, WeChat has some sort of wallet where you load it with money and then you use it to pay merchants wherever you go. If you go to a supermarket to do shopping, you can pay using WeChat. If you go to a restaurant, you order your food, you can pay using WeChat, wherever. And a lot of people accept payments via WeChat. So you've gotten to a point where people realize it's pointless having your money in the bank and then withdrawing it to load your wallet. So how about just either getting paid via, the, via WeChat, so all your money is there and you can use it to pay. So my point is, if you look at a place like China, where the company providing this service has, uh, has enough support from the government to do something like that, such that they've become, it's, basic, it's literally a monopoly. Kind of like what we have in Kenya with Safaricom, but that is on a far greater scale. Because in China, you, you have far more people using WeChat than we have people using um, M-Pesa. So my point is, if you look at uh, the way these systems work, um, the correct environment to allow for these kinds of payments includes, of course, political goodwill. Of course, the government needs to support something like that, otherwise it goes nowhere. And then uh, the other thing, of course, you need, uh, like, uh, competition is good sometimes, but, if you get the company that providing this service, if they have enough financial muscle, they can as well push whatever. They can push for this idea to be implemented and to be taken up. And then of course you have to have um, a people who are willing to take up this kind of thing. So the peculiarity of Kenyans, why we've taken this M-Pesa app so fast, and the way it, why it's popular in the country, it's because um, if you compare with a country like South Africa, Kenya has had a um, majority of its population not being banked. Let's see, by 2006, you can estimate the number of people who had bank accounts. Okay, let's go back then, when we were much younger, when I was in class three, four. And at the time, I remember, the truth is, at the time, how much was a, 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 a Safaricom line, if I may ask? It was more than a thousand shillings, yeah? 2,500 or something? And it was owned by a select few. And at the time, okay, bank accounts. How many people had bank accounts then? Mostly it was just business and rich businessmen at the time, right? 
And then, why do you think so? Because the costs of banking were way too high. Bank account maintenance fees, they were just too high. It was basically beyond affordable by a um, majority of Kenyans. So when Pesa came in with uh, these charges of less than a thousand shillings to have your money and transfer it, it became very easy to, for people to adapt. And then I would point out that the reason Mpesa failed in a place like South Africa is because majority of the people already had bank accounts and the banks are everywhere and they have proper network and their rates are very friendly. That's why Mpesa wouldn't work in a place like that. So, um, uh, looking at the ecosystem as it is in uh, Kenya at the moment, um, let me see, how many of you people only have one line, one SIM card? Which one? Safaricom, good. Anyone who only has one line, which one? Safaricom. <laughs> so, um, for those who are not aware, uh, Safaricom is majority owned by Vodacom, okay? Yeah? Vodacom is the parent company, and they've got money. Although, to be honest, if you had to look